William Bendix in The Life of Riley. With Marjorie Reynolds as Peg, Tom DeAndre as Gillis, Wes Morgan as Junior, and Gloria Blondell as Honeybee. Produced by Tom McKnight. Robbing your daughter of a wonderful experience. Well, a military wedding is very dramatic. The officers cross swords for the bride and groom to walk under, and I follow on the arm of maybe a handsome admiral or some other high-ranking officer. I don't care if you're walking with a top sergeant. <laughs> you're still up in a big city all alone. But I won't be alone. I'll be surrounded by dozens and dozens of sailors. <laughs> that settles it. You can't go. Oh, Dad, you're impossible. I'll never forgive you. <laughs> there go the waterworks again. You <laughs> don't have to be so brusque about it. Now look, Peg, as a father, I know my duty. And as an ex-sailor, I know gobs. Oh, she'll cry all night. She will? Well, naturally. She's very disappointed. I know how to fix the whole thing, Peg. She can go. If you go with her. Oh, Riley, I, I can't. Well, sure you can. You go along with her personally. Maybe that'll stop the waterworks around here. Well, I can just see you and Junior without me to look after you. All right. You're robbing your daughter of a wonderful military wedding and making her cry all night. Oh, I like that. She can go if you go with her. But if you're too stubborn to go, then it ain't my fault. She can't blame her father. <laughs> Wait a minute, Riley. Peg, I don't want to discuss it any further. I've got a headache now from arguing. I'm going out on the porch and blow out my brains with some fresh air. Well, he's got some salt here the wife forgot to put any in my lunchbox. Yeah, help yourself. Oh, good. Lyle and I were just discussing women. Anyone I know? Yeah, my wife, Peg. I've been telling her to go to San Francisco, but she won't go. Oh, you should have taken the positive attitude, Riley. Ordered her to go. Positively. Yeah. Uh, married couples see too much of each other. Do you boys know what wrecks most marriages? Yeah, weddings. <laughs> For propinquity. We don't even keep it in the house. No. Propinquity means uh, too close an association, Riley. Now, if wives would take a trip every once in a while, they'd come back fresh-minded and happy to see their husbands again, you know? <laughs> you mean you think I should order her to go? Well, in a sort of a diplomatic way. Now, that's Stalin. You gotta be firm. You gotta nip it in the bud. You're right. I'll say, Peg, you've got to go. Because the only way married people can live together and be happy is to separate and be miserable. A dollar from the Evanses. That leaves the Gillises and the Rileys to fill our quota. Honey Bee Gillis usually contributes to the Welfare League. Let's call there first. I've got to sit down somewhere. My feet are killing me. And Peg Riley is a substantial giver. If that silly Riley isn't there to ask stupid questions. Oh, if he is home, I'll tackle him. I think he's kind of cute. Dad and Junior will be okay for a couple of days, Mom, and we'd have a great time. Please say you'll go. Well, I haven't been to San Francisco in years. I could call on the Devlins and the Good Acres. Mom, then you'll go? Well, I'll think it over and talk to your father again. Oh. Talk to me about what? Oh, hello, dear. Hi, Dad. If you mean about taking my dear, sweet little Babsy to San Francisco, there's nothing to talk over. My head's made up. You're going. Oh, is that so? Well, is that an ultimatum? We don't have to go through Webster's Encyclopedia over a simple little thing like a trip to San Francisco. Of course, I'll miss you, but it'll be a good thing to miss you for a change. What? Married people should separate once in a while so that propinquity don't set in like terminals. <laughs> We didn't get three dollars from Peg. We'll have filled our quota. Oh, oh Junior. Foolish, Forbes. Is your mother home? Yeah, she's in the kitchen arguing with Pop. Go on in. <laughs> if they're having an argument, perhaps we'd better come another time. I most certainly am not coming out here again. 
argument or no argument. I'll make up my own mind, Riley. It sounds as if you're trying to get rid of me for some reason of your own. There you go, Peg. Twisted my words all up. It doesn't need very much twisting to show you want to get rid of me. The only reason I want to get rid of you is for the good of everybody. Well, in that case, I'll make it easy for you. Mother, I don't think Dad means that... Don't tell me what I mean, Babs. I'm ordering you to go, both of you. And that's the end of my ultimatum. The beast. Come, Amelia. Come on. I'll send a wire to Mary Ann to let her know we're coming. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Mom. You're a couple of dolls. <laughs> you're, uh, you're not sore at me for making Babs happy, are you, Peg? Mm, I suppose not, but I don't care about being ordered to go. Just remember, you brought it on yourself. I will. But you've got to promise me one thing. Another ultimatum? No, this is positive. I want you to come right home as soon as that wedding is over so we can get on with ours. Oh, Riley. <laughs> I'm ordering you to go, he said. The both of you. She must have done something terrible. Oh, isn't it exciting? Amelia Forbes told Letitia she phoned me. Yes, of course, it's true. Peg and Babs left with two suitcases. Oh, probably taking the silverware. Well, my dear, I heard it was a knockdown, drag out fight. And then Peg just ups and leaves him bag and baggage. Why, to Reno, of course. <laughs> Isn't it a shame? You and your big mouth. I just told him to put his foot down and don't let her get away with nothing. So Lame Brain listens to your yaks and goes home and throws her out. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. She's gone to San Francisco to a wedding. That's what he says. It's all over town. They split up. She took Babs in the bankroll. He gets Junior. He got the short end. <laughs> I hadn't been visiting Mama, but I heard the whole thing personally. One of these days, there's going to be a key in Riley's back door, and you're going to puncture an eardrum. <laughs> when I got home, she'd gone, and I had to hear the whole thing over the party line. Let's use the phone once for talking. Let's call Riley. The poor guy must be down in the dumps. That's the place for him. <laughs> So what, we have scrambled eggs. Maybe it's Peg. Hello, Peg. Oh, oh, Gillis. Yeah, uh, this is Riley the Bachelor speaking. Oh, then it's true, huh? How do you feel? Ah, oh, well, feeling great. Why, why, how'd you expect me to be feeling? Ah, uh, just a louse. You want me to send Honey Bee over to help you out? No, Junior and me are getting along great. We're sure we're alone. What of it? No, why should Peg leave a goodbye note? I knew she was going. I ordered her to go. I got sick of arguing. For sure, I'm enjoying every minute of it. Okay. Then let me be the first to tell you you're a skunk. What'd I say? Everything's burning, including my hands. And breakfast is over. Over? We haven't even sat down yet. Junior, you and me are going to the lunch wagon and have a stylish breakfast. What's in the basket? Food, I think. I found it on the porch. Fried chicken, meatloaf, buttered biscuits. And pie. I think it's boysenberry. <laughs> nope, loganberry. <laughs> From your pals and Lodge Brothers in the BPLA. Muley, Squarehead, Otto, and Herman. Keep your chin up and don't tell our wives we still love them. Junior, let this be a lesson to you. A man never knows how many friends he's got till his wife leaves him. Breakfast is served. Oh, hello. 
Miss Warbish. Oh, and how is my brave little man today? Hungry. Oh, oh, you poor motherless little lad, wandering about the streets all alone. I'm not wandering. I'm going home to help Pop get supper. Oh, uh, is, um, is your Papa home, uh, all alone? Yeah. I'm going to keep him company. Oh, well, don't you worry about him. He won't be lonesome for long. He'll be lonesome as long as Mom's gone. Junior, there's an old saying. It takes a woman to make a man forget another woman. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chester. Oh, hello, Dr. Benson. I was just making a call in the neighborhood. Thought I'd stop and see how you were taking things. What things? You didn't give me anything to take. Uh, general condition of things. Oh, my general condition. Well, I, I got an excruciating indigestion from eating my own cooking, but you and me are being good sports about it. Don't be a fool, Riley. Get Peg back before it's too late. You mean my cooking could kill us? I mean that marriage is a sacred partnership that shouldn't be broken. Oh, you don't have to sell me on marriage, Doc. I'm in favor of it. Then get paid back. If not for your own sake, for Babs and Junior. Well, what about my indigestion? Oh, take some bicarbonate. Phone Peg tonight. Why should I phone Peg for bicarbonate? I got it right here in the medicine shop. Tiger Smith knocks out baby-faced Kreplock. Who cares? Why don't they say something about Peg and Babs at the naval wedding? Well, I'm going to bed now, Pop. Well, well, Junior, it's only 9 o'clock. Stay up and keep me company, huh? We can play checkers. Tomorrow's Saturday, Pop. I got a ball game to play. Junior, I'm lonesome. Why don't you go over to the Gillises? Well, they ain't speaking to me. I don't know why. They must have caught you throwing the grass cuttings over the fence again. <laughs> Night, Pop. Uh, Junior, wait. I'll call the Gillises and apologize for the grass cuttings. You don't have to break my ear on account of a couple of blades of grass. <laughs> Maybe that's Gillis. Come on. Good evening, Mr. Riley. Do you remember little me? Well, the, the face is familiar, but uh, Mrs. Riley ain't at home. I know. You poor man. Loneliness can be a terrible affliction. May I come in? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Chester, I, uh, I may call you Chester? Well, most of my friends call me Riley, but in your case, I'll make an exception. <laughs> I'm Amelia Forbish. Yeah, well... Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember you. We, we met at the block party last year. We danced together, Chester. And when you held me in your arms, oh, I felt a warmth here. Yeah, I forgot to put out my pipe. <laughs> as soon as I heard about your wife leaving, I went right home and baked these cookies. I said to myself, Amelia, that poor lonely creature needs feeding. Everybody thinks I'm starving to death. <laughs> well, you know the saying, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Yeah, well, in, in my case, the trip ain't necessary, Miss Forbush. <laughs> My friends, my real friends, call me Emmy. I remember that, madam. I, too, live alone, Chester, and I know what you must be going through in this great big house. Well, the five rooms and a kitchen ain't exactly the United Nations building. I admire your spirit, Chester, dear. But we must think of your poor motherless son, dear little Junior. I just love boys, all ages. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Forbish, 
There's something puzzling my head. <laughs> well, then, just sit back and let me soothe your aching brow. Relax. Just relax. How can I relax with you giving me a shampoo? <laughs> Close your eyes. And I'll read you the evening paper. Uh, Tiger Smith knocked out baby face crap. Uh, I read it a couple of times. <laughs> Where's your pipe? Let me get your pipe. Well, I don't think you can smoke it. It's pretty strong. <laughs> your slippers. Now, where do you keep your slippers? No, I don't need my slippers. I I'm going to bed. Uh, thanks for the cookies, Miss Forbish. <laughs> oh, well, I guess... Well, if you're really tired, I'll go... But I'll drop by in the morning and get your breakfast. Well, don't bother. I always eat breakfast out starting tomorrow. I'll put on the porch light so you can see your way out. Oh, sometimes it's hard to say goodbye, isn't it, Chester? In some cases, it's practically impossible. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> detective agency, we never sleep. Wait a minute, mister, I mean... I understand your wife has left you and is now residing in San Francisco, right? Yeah. Why? Well, she had a good reason, you see. It'll never stand up in court. In court? Mitch, she deserted you, didn't she? No. No, she's coming back. You see, that's what they all say. Now, to make this thing stick, we'll need evidence. Plain desertion ain't enough. Are you trying to tell me that I... that my wife Peg... What else? Get out of my house. Get out! Okay, Mr. Lever, keep the car. Out! It ain't possible. She never deserted me before. Honey Bee thinks I went downtown. I can't hold out no longer, Ralph. Louse or no louse, you and me are still pals. Gee, thanks, Gillis. I appreciate it. Besides, I'm curious. Who was that guy came to see you today? Oh, that was a private detective. A detective? I thought it was a lawyer Peg sent. Why should Peg send me a lawyer? Community property, Ryle. Peg gets half of everything, including Junior. How can she get half a junior? He ain't on hinges. It's the law. What's the law got to do with it? Peg only went away for the weekend. If it's only for the weekend, how come she took a coat with her? What do you mean? 
It's too warm in San Francisco for a coat. Unless maybe she's going someplace where a coat would come in handy, like, uh, let's say, Nevada. Nevada? Let's face it, Lyle. Reno. Reno? Nevada? My own wife, after 19 years of marriage, goes to Reno without taking me with her. Hey, Clark, the phone. It's Mom. Now listen, Dublin. I want you to come home. We ain't separating, and that's my ultimatum. Stop shouting, Riley. What are you talking about? I'm saying I didn't mean what I said about your going, because I want you to come back before you go and talk it over about your going, because after you're gone, it'll be too late. But I am back. Babs and I are at the station. Oh, look, Peg Dumplin', give me another chance. I'll be a better husband. Uh, you're where? At the station. The wedding was a day early, so we took the first train home. Stay right where you are, Dumplin'. I'll come right down and pick you up. She's come back to me. She didn't go to Reno. You don't have to be separated, Junior. Stay right where you are, Dumplin'. I'll be right there. I am sorry. You and your party are no longer connected. Oh, yeah? That's what you think, sister. That's what you think. <laughs> If wives would take a trip every once in a while, they'd come back fresh-minded and happy to see their husbands again, you know? <laughs> you mean you think I should order her to go? Well, in a sort of a diplomatic way. Now that's stalling. You gotta be firm. You gotta nip it in the bud. You're right. I'll say, Peg, you've got to go. Because the only way married people can live together and be happy is to separate and be miserable. A dollar from the Evanses. That leaves the Gillises and the Rileys to fill our quota. Honey B. Gillis usually contributes to the Welfare League. Let's call there first. I've got to sit down somewhere. My feet are killing me. And Peg Riley is a substantial giver. If that silly Riley isn't there to ask stupid questions. Oh, if he is home, I'll tackle him. I think he's kind of cute. <laughs> Dad and Junior will be okay for a couple of days, Mom, and we'd have a great time. Please say you'll go. Well, I haven't been to San Francisco in years. I could call on the Devlins and the Good Acres. Mom, and you'll go? Well, I'll think it over and talk to your father again. Oh. Talk to me about what? Oh, hello, dear. Hi, Dad. If you mean about taking my dear sweet little... I oh, can't. Well, sure you can. You go along with her personally. Maybe that'll stop the waterworks around here. Well, I can just see you and Junior without me to look after you. All right. You're robbing your daughter of a wonderful military wedding and making her cry all night. Oh, I like that. She can go if you go with her. But if you're too stubborn to go, then it ain't my fault. She can't blame her father. Wait a minute, Riley. Peg, I don't want to discuss it any further. I've got a headache now from arguing. I'm going out on the porch and blow out my brains with some fresh air. Well, I've got some salt here. The wife forgot to put any in my lunchbox. Yeah, help yourself. Oh, good. Lyle and I were just discussing women. Anyone I know? Yeah, my wife, Peg. I've been telling her to go to San Francisco, but she won't go. Oh, you should have taken the positive attitude, Riley. Ordered her to go. Positively. Yeah. Uh, married couples see too much of each other. Do you boys know what wrecks most marriages? Yeah, weddings. <laughs> For banqueting. We don't even keep it in the house. No. Propinquity what he means uh, too close an association. William Bendix in The Life of Riley with Marjorie Reynolds as Peg, Tom DeAndre as Gillis, Wes Morgan as Junior, and Gloria Blondell as Honeybee.
produced by Tom McKnight. Robbing your daughter of a wonderful experience. Wow, a military wedding is very dramatic. The officers cross swords for the bride and groom to walk under, and I follow on the arm of maybe a handsome admiral or some other high-ranking officer. I don't care if you're walking with a top sergeant. You're still up in a big city all alone. But I won't be alone. I'll be surrounded by dozens and dozens of sailors. That settles it. You can't go. Oh, Dad, you're impossible. I'll never forgive you. There go the waterworks again. You don't have to be so brusque about it. Now look, Peg, as a father, I know my duty. And as an ex-sailor, I know gobs. Oh, she'll cry all night. She will? Well, naturally. She's very disappointed. I know how to fix the whole thing, Peg. She can go. If you go with her. Oh, Riley, I... Babs, you to San Francisco, there's nothing to talk over. My head's made up. You're going. Oh, is that so? Well, is that an ultimatum? We don't have to go through Webster's Encyclopedia over a simple little thing like a trip to San Francisco. Of course, I'll miss you, but it'll be a good thing to miss you for a change. What? Married people should separate once in a while so that propinquity don't set in like termites. We didn't get three dollars from Peg. We'll have filled our quota. Oh, oh Junior. Foolish, Forby. Is your mother home? Yeah, she's in the kitchen arguing with Pop. Go on in. <laughs> They're having an argument. Perhaps we'd better come another time. I most certainly am not coming out here again. Argument or no argument. I'll make up my own mind, Riley. It sounds as if you're trying to get rid of me for some reason of your own. There you go, Peg. Twisted my words all up. It doesn't need very much twisting to show you want to get rid of me. The only reason I want to get rid of you is for the good of everybody. Well, in that case, I'll make it easy for you. Mother, I don't think Dad means that... Don't tell me what I mean, Babs. I'm ordering you to go, both of you. And that's the end of my ultimatum. Stop, beast. Come, Amelia. Come on. I'll send a wire to Mary Ann to let her know we're coming. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Mom. You're a couple of dolls. <laughs> you're, uh, you're not sore at me for making Babs happy, are you, Peg? Mm, I suppose not, but I don't care about being ordered to go. Just remember, you brought it on yourself. I will. But you've got to promise me one thing. Another ultimatum? No, this is positive. I want you to come right home as soon as that wedding is over so we can get on with ours. Oh, Riley. <laughs> I tell you, I heard it with my own ears, Leticia. Riley practically threw her out of the house. I'm ordering you to go, he said. The both of you. She must have done something terrible. Oh, isn't it exciting? Amelia Forbes told Letitia and she phoned me. Yes, of course, it's true. Peg and Babs left with two suitcases. Oh, probably taking the silverware. Well, my dear, I heard it was a knockdown, drag-out fight. And then Peg just ups and leaves in bag and baggage. By Torino, of course. <laughs> Isn't it a shame? You and your big mouth. I just told him to put his foot down and don't let her get away with nothing. So Lame Brain listens to your yaks and goes home and throws her out. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. She's gone to San Francisco to a wedding. That's what he says. It's all over town. They split up. She took Babs in the bankroll. He gets Junior. He got the short end. If I hadn't been visiting Mama, I'd have heard the whole thing personally.